So this is Robert and we are on part two of our tutorial for painting our iRacing car. Um, we are in Photoshop and this session will be editing tips uh, in Photoshop. Uh, if you're using an application other than Photoshop, some of these things may be similar, but can't guarantee it's all the same. So uh, first thing, we'll take a look at the interface, what we're working with in Photoshop. Off to the left side is my toolbar. And this has uh, a variety of tools that we work with. What we're going to care about most are these top four. There's a move tool and a, couple, a few selection tools. And then also at the very bottom um, are the foreground and background um, colors. And so there's a black foreground, white background. We're going to work with those as far as painting uh, the car. Now off to the right are all these panels. Now, we don't need all of these open right now, and you can basically just grab the tab that has the panel name, drag it out and hit a little X to close it, and kind of clean up uh, the layout here so I don't have so many things in my way. Uh, so now I've got basically the colors up top, and below that are all my layers. And uh, just to the left of that, I have a little pop out for the history as well. Now that's me. Uh, if I make mistakes or want to dial back to a previous state, I can do that. So that'll be, get me set. Now, all that stuff I closed, if you want to access them, you just go under the window menu up top, uh, and that's where all the panels are. You can open them up and put them back there however you want to. Now, I've got my car, and I'm going to double click on my hand tool, which snaps it to fit my viewing area. And uh, we're going to go to my layers. And on the turn off before exporting and the, the previous tutorial, uh, step one covered what all is in these layers, so I won't dwell on that. But I want to turn on the wire frame, which is basically the, uh, the frame around the cars, and I want to turn on the number blocks, because uh, that's where iRacing places the numbers. Sponsor blocks, don't care about, delete, yes. Um, and then in the paintable area, I don't care about the car decal, decals, so I'm going to delete that. Don't care about the Color change logos, so I'm going to delete that. Um, banner, I'll keep. That's that's the you know, the windshield banner. Uh, cockpit color, uh, we'll keep. Uh, pit box colors, again, I'm not sure what that affects, but I'll keep it. Uh, car patterns, going to delete that. Don't need that. We're making our own. Uh, and then the base color, that's the color of the car. So we're going to start by picking out colors. All right, so I'm going to go with a nice kind of cream and pink themed car. So I'm going to select my foreground color, which is black here, and I get a color picker and I want to make kind of a cream color. So I'll pick kind of like a yellowish, light kind of faded cream color, sort of an off white. And then for my background color, if I click on that white box, pops up another color picker. And for my background, I'll pick a nice pink, kind of a, a pastel, pale pink and okay. Now, a little tip is when you have those open, you can add those here to the swatches panel. You can create new swatches, and that way you don't have to go like repick the color or remember the settings. You can just go to your swatches panel, and you can see I've already have them here. There's a, a cream color and a pink color, uh, and you can really quickly get back to them if, as you're switching through colors. Um, now, to paint the background of the car, I go to the base layer, and that is all and let me give you a little quick tip. If you use the Option or Alt key, depending on which operating system, Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, and click on a layer, that turns on only that layer. Uh, and you see the base layer is just the base paint color. So um, I want to go ahead and change that to a cream color. I'm going to go turn back on my other layers, though, so we can see what we're working with. Um, and real quick tip. Rather than using paint brushes and, and, and you know, painting over areas, uh, the quickest way to fill something with color is to use the shortcut keys. Um, and so Alt or Option, again, depending on Windows or Mac, Delete will fill something with your foreground color. And then Control or Command, again, Control, Windows, Command, Mac, will fill something with your background color. So if I hit Alt, Delete, bam, paint in my car. There you go. Done. Let's wrap it up. All right. Um, so I got my base color down. Now I'm going to go ahead and add um, some stripes. Now in Photoshop, one of the great things is layers because now I can work on separate items without affecting the others. So I'm going to create a new layer with a little plus button down at the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to call this one stripes. 
And that's where I'm going to put my pink stripes. All right. Now, to, again, rather than using a paintbrush and draw by hand because it looks all clumsy and is usually jagged and yucky, I'm going to use my selection tools. And I've got a rectangle selection tool. And if you click and hold, you can see there's a rectangle, an elliptical, and, and a few other selection tools. I'm just going to use the rectangle. And we'll zoom in. And again, double click the magnifying glass to zoom into 100% view. Use the hand tool to place it where I need it. Uh, and then grab that rectangle selection tool. And what's nice with the wires, I can see where the center line of the hood is, and I've got some contour lines. So I can kind of space this nice and evenly. I can kind of just basically the, the middle four contour lines uh, I'll use for my stripe. And once that's selected, there we go. Now all I have to do to paint that in, again, my shortcut keys, this time in Control Delete or Command Delete, depending on Windows or Mac, will go ahead and fill it in uh, with your, oh, it's not doing it. Uh-oh, I broke my computer. Uh, we'll fill it in with your background color. See, I got the layer selected. I am working with a Bluetooth keyboard that goes to sleep occasionally. Oh, there it goes. Anyway. All right. So, control, delete, boom. Fills it in with uh, that pale pink color. Now, I'm going to zoom back out. Double click the hand tool. And I want to go ahead and take this stripe and place it other places. Now, I don't, I, I can click and drag a selection around, um, but I can't rotate it and do a lot of other stuff with that. So what's easier is I'm just going to use my move tool. I'm going to click on that, and I get that set of pink pixels selected. If I hold down my alt key when I drag, or when I hold my alt key, um, it will turn the uh, my selection arrow into like this into a double-headed arrow, meaning I'm going to make a copy. Uh, same sort of thing works in Windows and other applications. Uh, and so, or in Office and other applications. So I'm going to click and drag out a copy. And then when I go to the corner, I get a little rotate icon for my cursor. And I'm going to rotate this around. And again, I can look at the, the lines on my trunk and kind of get my best guess. And use my arrow keys to kind of nudge it. I uh, get my best guess for where the center line of that trunk is. And now I want to shrink this bottom edge. Now, if I just go to the bottom edge, click and drag up, it shrinks it to scale, meaning all sides shrink. That's not what I want. So control Z, undo. If I hold down shift, I can shrink it and just vertically. There we go. And I'll, now when you do move, or type operations like using uh, the text, um, you typically have to accept that change so it knows you're done. So up in the top in my uh, option bar here, there's a little checkbox and a no, meaning, well, no, I didn't want to do that. Or checkbox, yes, I did. So I'll hit the checkbox. Yep, it set that change there. Now I'm going to go ahead and alt click again, drag out another copy, and this one's going to go to my rear bumper. And again, I can use my arrow keys to kind of nudge it in place. Uh, and uh, if I need to kind of shift and click the edges and just get it to just the size I need to cover that area of the bumper. And again, hit the checkbox to say, yep, that's what I want. So now we've got another copy drag out. Now I'm going to hold down my Alt key one more time. And I'm going to drag this over to the front of the car. And again, with my shift key, I can just change the height without affecting the width. And I think I've got it in position. And hit my checkbox. Good. There we go. I've got stripes on all the sides of my cars. And we can see. Now I'm going to go ahead, control D, deselects those pixels. There we go. And so I've got my stripes on all sides of my cars. I'm all set. Now I want to go ahead and uh, add a swoosh to the sides that are just a stripe. Now I could take, you know, that rectangle select tool and just, you know, draw a, a side panel kind of thing, but I want to make a little bit of a different shape. So I'm going to do control D, deselect. And just underneath that rectangle select, um, we've got a few lasso select tools. There's a, a regular lasso, which is a freehand uh, drawing one. I'm going to pick the polygon. Polygon lets me draw shapes. Uh, and let me Control D, undo that one. Uh, and it's really useful uh, for drawing here. So I'm going to double click my magnifying glass. I'm going to go in 
to here to the side of the car. Uh, and again, these these wire lines help me line things up. So I'll look maybe a couple a couple of whatever wire frame lines up from the, the base panel, and I'll just start drawing this out. And every time you click, you kind of set an anchor point for this line. And again, you just want to cover up the green area that represents the edge of the body panel. All you need to do. And bring it back to the starting point, and you can see I get this little circle icon, meaning I'm closing the loop. And when I do that, and let's zoom back out so we can see, I've kind of made this swoosh going along the side of the car. Now, what I'd like it to do is, is kind of be curved. So I can modify my selections. Zoom in again. Um, anytime I can use any of my selection tools, and I can modify this um, simply by holding down the shift uh, or the alt key. And let me show you, give you an example. I'll grab this polygon tool. If I wanted to maybe take a stripe out of this thing um, or a diagonal stripe out of this so I can insert a graphic or a sponsor name. Um, if I hold down the alt key, um, sorry, here we go, the alt key, you'll see a little minus symbol on my polygon tool. And that means I'm taking away from my current selection. And so if I do something like this, I'm going to close. There we go. Um, yeah, now I have, I've taken that chunk out of there. Now, if I decide, you know what, I just need maybe part of that taken out, and then I'll, uh, you know, put in, uh, uh, maybe I want to connect here at the bottom. So if I hold down the Shift key, I can add to my selection. So holding down the Shift key, I'll reconnect the bottom section of this. And this works with all of my selection tools. So I can use the rectangle tool, the circle tool. If I wanted to you know, do a rectangle and cut a circle out of it, again, using the shift or the alt key adds uh, or subtracts from my selection. So I've made this swoosh with a little notch in it, or maybe I want to put a sponsor logo in there. All right, so let's zoom back out. There we go. Now to fill that in again, it's control, delete. Oh, you know what? I do have to select a layer, sorry. Stripes, select my stripes layer, and now control fully. There we go. So now I've got that added. Now I want to put that on the other side as well. So if I use my move tool again, just like I did with the others. Now, again, the alt key lets me copy when I drag. So click the alt and I'll drag it up. And if I want to constrain it so that it's kind of in the same line, if I hold down the shift key, it makes me drag in a straight line. All right, so I'll drag this up here to the edge. Now the obvious problem is that it is turned around, rotated the wrong way for this side of the car. So if I go to edit, transform, I've got flip vertical. So that's kind of, you know, because it's the other side of this car is flipped the other way. So if I flip vertical, boom, and now I can drag it back down. And there we go. I've got my swoosh with a little notch for a sponsor logo on both sides. And let me go ahead and click here. Now, Control D will, will deselect. So now I've got my whole stripes layer done. Now, a little shortcut, a little tip when you're working on these layers. Let's say I decide, nah, I don't like pink. I want lime green. If I wanted to select every pixel on a the layer, there's a neat shortcut. If I put my mouse over the icon for that layer, and I hold down the Control key or Command on Mac, and I click on that icon, it selects every pixel on that layer. So now I've got every pixel selected. So let's let's go pick a different color. Let's go do like a lime green or something. Control delete or command delete. There we go, fills in with my background color. So now one one click, I've quickly changed my color scheme. I don't really like that. I'm, I'm kind of partial to pink. So I'm gonna go back to my history and just walk it backwards till I get where I want it to, to be. There we go. Um, I'm all set. Let's let's talk about adding some graphics and some logos. So uh, to do that, we're going to let me select a layer. Um, and so it should insert just above that layer. So it's not randomly just dropping at the top uh, of my uh, Photoshop file. And then and do uh, file, place, 
and there's a place embedded or place linked. Linked makes a link to another file, and if you move your files around on your hard drive, they may or might, may not wind up in the same place. Where if you place embedded, it actually embeds that graphic into your Photoshop file. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do place embedded. And in this instance, let's go here to some graphics that I have. Um, and here we go. Here's a, let's see, got some graphics and things that are going here. What would I like? Oh, I got the, the, the SCCA Majors logo. Maybe I want to drop that uh, into the uh, into that section. Okay, so here we go. Now, I'm going to resize it so it fits. It doesn't fit the, the shape that we had, but that's where we're going to put it. All right, check. There we go. Now, if I want to put that on the other side, again, use my selection tool or my move tool, that is, and I hold down my alt key. And we're going to shift and drag it here. Now, rather than I can do the flip um, vertical, or I can just use my rotate. When I move up to the corner of an object, I can see the little rotate cursor, and hold down the shift key so it makes it nice, even increments, and just rotate that around. Uh, I'm also going to go back down to my original one down here, move it back kind of inside of that notch that I cut out. Perfect! Okay, we got some, some series logos on there. Let's go ahead and add some more. That was fun. File, uh, place, and again, embedded. Uh, and I'm going to do, oh, I've got a Hoosier tire logo. That's cool. So let's take that, scale it down, just resize it, put it over the wheel well, hit the checkbox up top here saying, yep, we like that. And then if I hold down my Alt key with my Move tool, I can drag up a copy, and again, move my cursor to the corner so I can rotate, hold down the shift key so it rotates nice and evenly, and there we go. I've got uh, my Hoosier, and then in my checkbox saying, yep, that's what I want, and there we go. Now, it's not exactly where I want it. I can, again, use the cursor keys to kind of nudge it into place so it's a little closer to what I was thinking. There we go. So we've got those on there. Now let's put a nice graphic on my hood. So I'm going to do a file, place, and again, place embedded. And I've got a PNG here of a unicorn. And I'm going to go ahead and place that. Obviously, we're going to resize it down. And again, if I hold down my shift key when I rotate, it does a nice even increment so I can get a, a perfect 90 degree rotation. And I'm going to scale it up a little bit bigger. We want a nice big hood graphic. And we'll place it right there. And again, the checkbox up top. Yep, locks in my selection. That's it. That's what I want. That is majestic. I love it. Now, this was great because the background was knocked out, so it just fit on there. Now, a lot of times you may look up a logo, a sponsor, a graphic, and the background's not knocked out. What do you do? Well, let's do let's do an example. So, file, place, embedded. And I've got a bribed stencil. So this one's for my, my Lemons friends. So this is a stencil they paint on cars when you bribe the judges, which um, if you're not a Lemons racer, that's actually a good thing. All right, so we'll hit place. And I'm going to go ahead, scale it down. We'll put this on the trunk, maybe rotate it a little. It's kind of big. Let's make it actually fit. There we go. Fit it on the trunk, scaled down. I've got my bribed stencil. All right, perfect. Now, I still have the background. Oh, let me hit my checkbox saying, yep, that's where I want it. Now, I still have the background. So let's look at my layers pa palette or panel. And what we have, we can see here's the bribed layer, and it's got this goofy icon right here. Um, that icon means it is a smart object, meaning it's retaining the original file embedded in here, and I'd have to double click and edit that file separately. And it, it's, it's kind of goofy. The easiest thing here when you embed something is if you just right click and you want to edit it, rasterize it. There you go. It's now regular pixels, just like everything else on the layers are, and I can select it with my selection tools. And in this case, I'm going to use the magic wand, which sounds like fun because it is. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see it. And if you use the magic wand tool, it selects pixels of the same color. So I want to knock out the white background, so I'll click on the white area, 
Um, and it gets a lot of the white, but there's areas where they're kind of blocked off, like inside of this armadillo area, inside of his eye, maybe inside of some of the, the letters. It didn't grab everything. And so if I hit delete right now, I still got some white kind of hanging around in there that I didn't want. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to go to my magic wand tool. And up in the options, uh, there's one called contiguous. If you turn that off, it means the pixels don't have to be connected. So if I click here, it just grabs everything that's white. And now when I hit delete, and we'll go ahead and deselect, control D so you can see, boom, grabbed all the white pixels, knocked them out. That looks fantastic. I'm going to double click the hand tool, zoom out. Um, we're looking pretty good. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add some panels here to the side uh, for the numbers to show, up in, show in so they kind of are highlighted. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to, Scroll down here, I'm going to make a new layer, uh, and I'll pick something like one of the layers and hit plus, and that'll just put a layer on top of it. Um, and you can call it layer one, or if you want to be all fancy, call it numbers. Ooh, my, my Bluetooth keyboard is a little wonky. Try that again. Numbers. Wow, it is very wonky. Sorry. But now it's called numbers. There you go. Good enough. All right. Um, I'm going to select the, the rectangle tool and I'm going to just draw a big rectangle around um, where that box is, where the numbers are going to appear. Uh, and in this case, I want the color to be white. So I can select my cream color and move it all the way over to white in that top corner. Uh, and again, to fill with the foreground color, uh, Alt Delete. Boom. There we go. Now, you can see the, the green color is still there. That's because that layer just happens to be on top of this. And we're going to turn that layer off before we export. So I'm not super worried about that right now. Uh, now I'm going to use my move tool to grab this layer. And shift and drag in a straight line, make a copy of it. And drop it right there. So now I've got another one. Now I'm going to uh, click away from there and go a blank space and hit control D. So I deselect everything. Um, and I'm going to select my numbers layer. And I want to put an outline around those. Now, doing that, I, I, I can do some drawing tools and select tools and that kind of stuff. We have an easy option. Down here at the bottom of my layers panel is an FX for effects. Um, and one of the options is stroke. And so I can pick a stroke effect. And I already have the pink color selected. And I can pick a, a width of my stroke or just, just a few pixel width, just something. There we go. And say, OK. And there we go. Now I have my box. It's got the uh, outline around it. Everything's set. Now I'm going to go in here before I export this. And I'm just going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to turn off the wire layer. Otherwise, that will be shown all over your car. It looks like you have a grid paper glued to your car. Um, the number blocks I'm going to turn off. Um, and that's it. That's all. That's, that's just the pixels that I want seen. One Last thing I will do, though, because I want that pink color on my cage. So let's go ahead and grab that pink color. Again, I can go down here out of my swatches, grab a pink color. And I want to change the, and I'm going to zoom in so it's easy to see. I want to change the cockpit color because in, in this particular skin, some of them have a separate cage uh, roll bar color, uh, not in the Miata. The cockpit color and the roll bar are the same color. Uh, and so this box right here represents that. And again, if I want to select the pixels uh, on a layer, uh, control click, and that grabs the box that has the cockpit colors. Now that layer is locked, um, so I can always just dump these pixels in another layer. Let's go ahead and use the stripes layer. I'll, I'll select that. Uh, and if I alt, delete, I should fill it with the foreground color. Great. Now I have the color set for my cockpit and my cage. Now I'm going to go deselect. Double click my hand tool. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like on the car. Now I'm going to do a file. Save as. And again, um, the iRacing tutorial, there's a link to it uh, in the description for this video. It uh, has you know, where to get files from. Uh, you know, where to save them to, what to call them, and that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to cover all that here. All right, now in iRacing, we want to preview our new paint. 
there's probably some really cool things in the replay where you can adjust the cameras and move them around and get the exact, exact angle you want. I don't know any of those. So what I do is I go out with the car and I do a great big donut or two, uh, turning to the left and to the right. Uh, and then I look at the replay so I can kind of see the different angles of the car as it's sliding around track. And you drop the file into the, the folder that you're supposed to and hit control R and it refreshes. So I've dropped in our new paint, so control R. Bam, cream color, uh, swooshy stripe on the side, stripe on the hood, unicorn, uh, sponsors, numbers, logos. Uh, let's go ahead and do the chase cam. There we go, we've got our bribe stencil painted on the back uh, and our nice pink roll bar. There you go, looks awesome, that's how you do it. Uh, hopefully that's a big help. Thanks a lot.